So I'll just go through it. I guess we'll save some time. Um, so 2 over x plus 3 plus uh, 1 over 5. Um, in this case, ladies and gentlemen, um, this becomes a little bit more difficult because now this is what we're going to be doing today. So all of what I did here was just to kind of get you guys warmed up into these next three problems that we're going to be doing. So in this case, it's a little bit more difficult. If you guys kind of think about this, you guys can understand that 5 divides into 15, right? You guys can understand that x divides into x squared because we can visualize that. But it becomes a lot more difficult when you guys start to think, what does x plus 3 and 5 divide into? Right? It, it, thinking about division and how that works, that really doesn't make as much sense. However, what I want you guys to notice is for all these examples, is almost the LCD every single time, almost, you guys can see, it's just the product of our two denominators. Right? Here. Here. Here, they're the same. So here's the product. Here's the product. Here, it's not the product. Because this, the product would be 15x cubed, right? And the reason why it's not the product is because 15x squared is the least common denominator. However, if you multiply the product, 15x cubed, that still is a common denominator. You could still do that. You'd just be able to simplify. Um, you'd have to simplify it, though, at the end. So here, when you have, start dealing with expressions, the LCD is basically just going to be the product of our denominators. Okay, so don't try to like overthink, you know, what numbers they expressions divide into. You guys can just think of it, it's gonna be the product of our two denominators. Now, again, just using the same rules we did before, you multiply what's gonna give you give you those two. So therefore when doing that, I obtain ten over five times x plus three plus x plus three over five times x plus 3. Now, you guys notice, again, I can add the 10 and the 3. Yes, Marissa? Yes, you can definitely simplify. I like to. If you remember, remember we were doing multiplying and dividing? We simplified expressions, right? So I always like to leave it in factored form. Because you never know when you might have to simplify them. And then at the end, if you want to distribute that, that's perfectly fine. Okay? The other reason why I don't like to distribute it, second of all, is because remember when we did constraints? So in this case, when you multiply it through, sometimes it's a little more difficult to identify what your constraints are. Here, you guys can see that my constraint is x cannot equal negative 3. And here, go here, x cannot equal 0. I didn't go through all the constraints on those. But you guys should know that also constraints, Nick, are going to follow, are going to be the same thing over here as well. So I always like to leave it in factored form and then if you want, and then to multiply it at the end. However, I will let you guys know for